It's the Alfie Brown Show. It's the 2nd of February 2022. And this week I will talk about the roast battle that I performed on Sunday with the Have a Word podcast. I will speak about Jimmy Carr's shit new joke. I will speak about Kurt Zuma kicking his cat briefly. And I will speak at length about uh, what everything means. You've listened to the podcast before. I can't really tell you with any definitive uh, clarity what the podcast is going to be about. I am on tour at the moment. The tickets are available at Alfie Brown Comedian dot com follow me on social media alfie brown comedian subscribe to the youtube channel like the video share it with your friends and your enemies if you hate this podcast please don't forget to tweet about it and let me know uh, all love it same deal just share like subscribe the internet the internet this is the alfie brown show you find me in an edinburgh ibis uh, this is the first video podcast that I've ever done uh, from away from home. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you have ever done a video podcast on the road before. Uh, my portable podcast setup is not quite as portable as I perhaps hoped it would be. I've struggled with this ever so slightly, and uh, I'm pleased to have it up and running in this Edinburgh Ibis, possibly the first uh, comedy video podcast from uh, the Edinburgh Ibis, possibly any Ibis, possibly any of the chain hotels in the Kingdom of Great Britain in Northern uh, Ireland. I don't know. I haven't watched all the video podcasts, but here I am uh, trying my best with my video podcast, portable, portable podcast setup. <laughs> the thing about the word portable is, I suppose anything is portable if you were willing to port it. Anything is, depends how much you want it to be portable. That's what makes something portable. Like a dining room table is portable if you are willing to take it somewhere. And I just, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be willing uh, to take this podcast set up with me everywhere I go. Um, There must be a smaller way to do this or an easier way to set this all up without, I'm not sure if you can see behind me on the bed, but there's so much shit that I've taken with me on the road doing this tour. And uh, I've got these little portable lights, a little portable lighting setup that actually come with um, little coloured uh, films, sort of like little coloured bit of plastic kind of uh, acetate sort of stuff that you can put in, in front of the light to colour it. And what the colours that it comes with are blue just in case you want to be look kind of dead. Uh, there's red, in case you want to look like, you know, a scene from Dexter. And there's this, what I've gone for. I've chosen piss. Uh, plain is, like, nobody wants to be that well lit. You need one of the little uh, bits of plastic in there to just sort of dampen what's going on. So I am lit in piss. Uh, what's been going on since the last time I spoke to you? I have been doing a roast battle on Sunday night, the Have A Word podcast roast battle of Adam and Dan. It was an American-style roast. If you are not across what an American-style roast is, basically it's um, you've got the subject of the roast, which is, you know, Adam and Dan from the Have A Word podcast or Alec Baldwin or Charlie Sheen or Donald Trump. And then you've got a selection of people, possibly appropriate people, varying degrees of, you know, appropriate for depending on what and who is this is the, is the main thing of the roast. It's sort of like to kind of to honor the person, I suppose, in a way you because there is a form of not flattery like me and everybody who was on at the roast. So it was um it was me, uh, Adam and Dan, um, Adam Rowe and Dan Nightingale from the Have a Word podcast, Mark Nelson, uh, Brennan Reese, uh, 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 Ishan Akbar, Freddie Quinn, Finn Taylor, me. And it was such an incredible bonding experience because for, I think for all of us, and we were talking about it afterwards and you know, a couple of people were like, you know, all worried afterwards going, sorry, was that too much? Or did I, 
think I misjudged it. Did I go too far? <laughs> Everybody being so nice and caring after having said some of the, just the, the worst things that you could say. But there is, you you get, I feel closer to them now because there was a sort of seal broken. There's That's why I think there's an attraction to dark humour. It's why when you are with your closest friends or on a WhatsApp conversation, you try and like excavate new depths or you try and say something that is not acceptable in the domain of civil society. But because you were with this friend, you know that they know you well enough to know that you aren't rep like your your brain isn't full of the hate that you just manifested through speech or you the the, the, the horrible darkness that you are like trying to dredge up to be funny because trying to get that darkness and you know render it powerless with humor can be a satisfying thing to do. I don't know of any sort of difficult situation I've ever been in in my life that I haven't tried to, uh, the, the power of which I haven't tried to break with humour. And we understand with each other that there isn't hate in it. It just, these, these horrible things are always there. They are, they, they exist and they might occur in people's brains. So there's, it's like, if you can be, it's almost like there's a, there's a new form of honesty or by displaying the worst thing that you, that, that you can say on a stage in front of 700 people at Comsans in Liverpool for money, then you know that that person, it doesn't feel like that person's ever going to need to lie to you ever again, <laughs> because why would they lie to you and try and hurt your feelings after all of that stuff that they've just said? There's no artifice. And by digging at the very depths of what it is possible to say, we know that we are like authentic. There's no, there can be no artifice anymore because we've just reached like a level that we, that, that, and nobody must ever know. It was, it was for the room. So everything that's beautiful about stand up comedy as well, the, uh, the, 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 the ephemera, the, the transience of it, the fact that stand up comedy doesn't age very well unless you're Richard Pryor, the fact that stand up comedy just isn't, it won't, it can't last. So stand up comedy might as well be current. It might as well be social satire, social commentary. Um, reflective and 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 also crowd work. This how spectacular and joyful crowd work is, and interactions that you might have with somebody in the audience at a gig, is spectacular because you know that you're never ever going to get that moment ever again. It it was in the room and it died, and everything, you know, death is, you know, without wanting to get too morbid or like, you know, uh, cod philosophy, death is what makes things beautiful. If nothing died, nothing would be beautiful. If you live forever, you wouldn't really, it was a flower. I don't give a fuck about that. It's only, it's only death that renders things like love or beauty, uh, important, uh, which is what makes stand up so beautiful is it's a short, short shelf life. Um, but I was thinking about the art of roasting or writing these jokes in the context of what's happened to Jimmy Carr and Jimmy Carr having made a joke in his special that was released a few months ago. Um, I'll praise you the joke cause it's not, you know, important or good, good enough to really give full airing to. Uh, but he said, uh, uh, the Holocaust was bad because loads of Jews died, but also loads of gypsy died. So it's not all bad. Um, actually, I prefer the way I delivered it uh, because I didn't do it with this haughty, ooh, ooh, this is naughty, which sort of makes the whole thing a lot worse uh, because it's inauthentic and because rather than try and... Y 
it's there's a frivolity to it. Also, the gypsies didn't. Uh, uh, so here's sorry to, to to catch you up on where my brain's gone. I was thinking I hate that joke because uh, it's small minded and uh, it's not got. It isn't the fact that it's about like the the murder of or the genocide of gypsies being a bad thing. <laughs> Uh, sorry, a good thing. It isn't about the fact that he says that the genocide of gypsies is a good thing that I have a problem with. Or it is, but it's that in conjunction with the fact that the joke is lazy. You don't give the pe- the victim of the joke respect to even make the joke good. If it was full of misdirection and contortions and like wordplay or it was making like if, if 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 there was a thought behind it that was slightly more involved or engaged with reality than just you know a uh, oh bad thing to mention naughty me it's just so stupid he's like a idiot it's an idiot's joke it's like the sort of joke that you find really titillating to tell when you're a teenager do you know remember i don't know who else like told lots of dead baby jokes when they were kids but I used to, you know, what's the, you know, all, all, all of those, all of those jokes that you'd tell. What's the hardest thing about fucking 28 year olds? There's 20 of them or whatever it is. Anyway, all those jokes that you'd tell when you were um, uh, like a kid. And that's what it sounded like to me. I just, what's the point? What, what are you, you're being paid to, um, and, and in interviews, he's always giving it this like, well, the thing that I learned was actually, uh, um, I can't do Jimmy Carr. Uh, the thing that I learned uh, was, you know, what, what reaction are you getting? He says this on the Have a Word podcast. He goes, um, are you getting a, ooh, or are you getting a, ha, 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 ooh. You know, are you making them surrender to the laugh? Talks about his own joke writing prowess with such, sort of, uh, you know, satisfaction, such a kind of highfalutin uh, pride at the fact that, well, I wouldn't do something so silly as to do, like, be shit. <laughs> and it is. And those, the, those, the community of, I don't know, I, the, the, the victim of the joke weren't, didn't ask to be, roasted they weren't complicit in the joke uh they they it's it's a i was thinking about whether or not i was a hypocrite basically for not liking that joke but liking all the jokes that i made which whilst they weren't they're not as offensive as jimmy carr's joke but they are less broadcastable if you see what i mean uh because of course you know uh we find uh language a lot more offensive than we find ideas as i've said 98 times and it's the you know drum i've been banging for such a long time but we give words a lot of uh, power and uh, 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 and gravity uh, that perhaps we don't give to offensive ideas and um i suppose that's my problem is the idea is small the joke is boring it's kind of hack crap and it gets away with it or it gets a reaction because it, it's, it's sort of a, an extraordinary thing to say. Well, I mean, y- you must, you must grow up. Uh, what else happened recently? Kurt Zuma, the West Ham centre-back, has been uh, fined £250,000 uh, for kicking his cat. He kicked his cat. Videos emerged of him kicking his cat uh, on social media. And then he still got picked by David, ha- uh, by, David, by David Moyes in the game later that evening. And I was shocked because he shins the cat, makes slices it, like, makes no connection with it. Awful shot. Just a little joke. Um... And the, and the good news is the victim of the joke can't speak English. Uh, well, can't, <laughs> can't, can't, can't communicate in human terms. Uh, not saying that people who don't speak English, sh- uh, you know, you can invite them to be the victim of jokes uh, at, at no moral cost. 
that would be a wrong thing to say. And do you, <laughs> and I did just slip into it, obviously, didn't I? I quite enjoy podcasting in an ibis. I do think that there is um something, or I wonder what is wrong with your brain that means that you think it's, the, 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 the guy from Making a Murderer, he like put his cat on the fire, didn't he? It means that there is, like, you, your your empathy facility isn't properly functioning, is it? Your capacity for empathy doesn't exist properly, which makes you a dangerous person to be around. Also, what I couldn't believe, and the most sickening thing about him um, abusing his cat, is that his kid was watching, or a child. I don't know who is his kid. And to do that, like, that must be, like, that must fuck you up in quite a seismic way. You can't, like, these, 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 he's, he's developing his sense of uh, the world, his ethics, his, his code, his sense of right and wrong. This is for like a ground up human and you're slapping and kicking a cat around and that is becoming normal. But then, then but there's laughing about it as well. There's nothing in, you know, when you're a child, you, you have to do horrible things or you at least have to see people do horrible things and then people be sad to work out that that's not something that you want to do. And that's not a person that you want to be. And you feel like guilt. That's what guilt is there for. And, and feelings of remorse and all of these things like guilt help you develop. Well, I'll avoid that horrible guilt feeling by not doing the horrible thing again. But if you have a role model showing you that you can be violent to something defenseless and a suitable reaction from the role model is to laugh. You are, that's, that's, that's poisoning. That's poisoning. That's, that's not just cat abuse. That's child abuse. Developing uh, these wrong instincts in small people. The cat's not the only vulnerable party. It's also the child that learns that the uh, abuse of the weaker thing is, uh, something to be laughed at. He, I cannot believe that he got picked for the game later that night, as if that is in any way okay. I hope that's all right, listener, who found my last episode too woke. I hope that you don't mind that I don't agree with the uh, cat um, being kicked, or is this part of my mad woke agenda is there any more overused and silly word than woke by people like it was it was originally like an american word wasn't it i think and it meant like stay woke to injustice stay awake don't sleep on injustice injustice is all around us it was racial injustice they were referring to don't sleep on racial injustice. Let, like, be 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 awake to the crimes that are occurring every day. Be woke to what's going on. And then, like all of these terms, like woke, becomes this thing that exists on a sliding scale depending on who you are and what you believe. And woke can either be a good thing that quite plainly and simply means being uh, like against racial injustice but now the the, the you know the, the language being this viral phenomenon these 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 words become th- they exist throughout the whole of society before the whole of society has really gotten what they mean or what what the f- what what does what does woke mean well those people who are against racism sort of think that it they keep on using it, don't they? So, uh, but then it's not plainly about being against. And then it becomes like woven into all of these other 
arguments. And whilst people start with the good intention of being awake to uh, racial injustice, then they get part of like, you know, then then the people who believe the right thing about racial injustice, which is that it shouldn't go on, start believing this other thing, which is stupid, but they maybe use woke, like I'm woke to that as well, even though oh, there was no need to be woke to that. You don't need to be that, that this is, this new problem is not the same as the problem that you've been fighting for such a long time or your, you know, your, 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 your arguments or your, your beliefs, your ethics and that situation. It's not, yes, you were right, but no, you were wrong. And people think in terms of the like teamification of like ethics, the, the culture war, people think that everything from their kind of collective moral identity is the good team and everybody else is the bad team. And people find it very hard to think in a kind of cross-party way, don't they? So therefore, the people who think the woke thing are actually uh, bad because, you know, they're all, you know, vegans and they they think that vaccine mandates are good and it's like now being woke is somehow illiberal because the the what it is to be against oppression of minorities is illiberal because maybe speech that oppresses people shouldn't be said, but then saying you shouldn't say things is against free speech. And I'm not coming at it from any particular side. I'm just trying to map out in my brain how these things take place. I know what I think. It seems quite simple to me, but what I think doesn't matter to you. So, uh, and it's not really what I'm interested in either. It's not, it's not what I think is not the most important thing to say. And it shouldn't be to you. There are smarter people than me to listen to on, on, on that. But the unpicking of uh, people's, you know, hard felt and often intransigent beliefs. And it's people on both sides that are intransigent and pig-headed that can't say, uh, you know, I'm right about this, but maybe I'm wrong about this, or I don't know. I think that's what I said about Joe Rogan last week. He doesn't, he doesn't know what he doesn't know. But then he came out and said, I don't even know. Like his statement was completely in conflict with his whole energy on his podcast. Oh, actually, I read some data that said that this. He's speaking declaratively about the way things are. And then in his little sorry video going, oh, sorry, I don't know anything. It's like a cop out, isn't it? Either you do believe something or you don't believe something. And you plainly say what you do believe. Otherwise, you wouldn't have had people you know, a vegan arguing with some guy who eats like moose cock or whatever it is you're doing all the time. You never, you ever eaten moose cock and then had that big moose cock boner? And, you know, obviously free speech is uh, uh, essential, but again, it, like in the same way as woke, people don't know what free speech is anymore. People don't know what the limits on their free speech are or were, or what a a dangerous limit on them would look like, because it's 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 a frenzied and scary place where people are just uh, are hungry to be the, the 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 victim of something like an oppression of their free speech. Um, not that it's not at all a problem, just that uh, it's not, it's not as uh, pervasive and life-threatening a problem as these people would have you believe. I think maybe the other thing that I said on the podcast last week was that I believed in global warming. Was that too woke? I thought that was just like, I thought we all basically believed in that or like we, we knew that we should care. I've got a new bit about how much I've, Fucking, how boring Greta Thunberg is. I, I tried it for the first time on this podcast. Honestly, I cannot fucking win, can I? I mean, a 4chan edgelord who's offensive and needs to be no platform from UCL for my dangerous 
rape joke or whatever it is that they tried to ban me from UCL for. Or now I'm being accused of being too woke. Well, maybe, maybe you're the problem. Maybe it's your um, unwillingness to feel uncomfortable with uh, other people stating things. Maybe that's not anything to do with me. Uh, but thank you for listening to the podcast. I really appreciate that. Always nice to have listeners to the podcast. <clears throat> Tor is a, it's such an amazing time to go to these different cities. First of all, I love going to different cities. Glasgow is beautiful, by the way. Don't know if any of you have ever been to Glasgow, but as somebody who loves Liverpool unreservedly, which I'm sure if you're a fan of the podcast or me, you'll, uh, you'll know uh, absolutely that I love Liverpool and my love for Liverpool has, uh, I've managed to infect Jessie, my girlfriend, with it as well. And Glasgow as well, such a similar energy in, you know, a, they are enthusiasts about their civic identity. And I love that. And also it's beautiful. It's a beautiful city. Um, and there's something so, I'm not sure what it is about being on tour, the lonely experience of it. And it feels kind of glorious. Like you, I go from um, town to town and people buy tickets to the shows. And if it goes well, they enjoy the show and they have been enjoying the show. So that's good. And then you've got this, this glory and you oscillate between sort of this satisfying, you know, perhaps eufor euphoric sensation of like having succeeded, being successful in the thing that you've always wanted to be successful in. And then you go back to your ibis in front of your piss colored lights try and knock off a podcast <laughs> so that people um, will, will listen and come again. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the, 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 yeah, the oscillating between the, the, the euphoria and the loneliness. I don't get too lonely. I miss my family, but I don't, I quite enjoy my own company as somebody who does a podcast by themselves and speaks uh, at length for, you know, however long. Obviously, I don't mind the sound of my own voice. And I like going to cafes by myself, restaurants by myself. Some people don't like that. They go into a restaurant by themselves. Just me, please. Just me, please. That's what I say. Just me, please. Thank you sit down with the menu and you can just be, I, you know, people are worried about what it looks like. that They look like losers or look, but I think there's a big fucking, there's a big cock energy to it. You know, just sitting down and going, Oh no, I'm happy. I'm happy with me. That's all I need. I know I'll be, I'll be very happy by myself. Thank you very much. Indeed. I actually am good enough company uh, that I can satisfy even my own desire for it. Thank you very much. I'll have the nachos. Thank you very much. And a Tizer. What flavor was Tizer? What was Tizer? Was it red? Do they still make Tizer? I wouldn't mind a Tizer. Um, also, great fun going up to uh, Glasgow and just winding them up a bit. I learned that the stand comedy club where I was on is one of the places that I, I didn't, I told them I got booed off there, but I didn't get booed off. I got, uh, I got close to getting booed off and then turned it around at the last minute. It was a big lesson for me. And it was how I learned to play in cities that would be predisposed to a dislike of me and my posh voice. Uh, and the way in which, you know, I always thought, would be the way to get around that, which was be 
charming and complimentary and grateful and nice is actually something that they really don't respond well to because they feel like you're being uh, duplicitous and inauthentic. Going back to the thing that makes, uh, you know, the roast battle such a, a joyful experience is that you 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 are being you are, you are not being yourself and they can tell whereas when you come on stage and go hello uh fuck all of you you stupid pigs not that but you know what i like to do is just wind, wind them up a little bit about you know how much i love the uh, the union of i said ah oh, scotland is my favorite bit of the union actually really is one of my favorite bits of the union the union of um uh you know uh, uh, great britain we in the kingdom it's my in in the kingdom the united kingdom which is my favorite really really is i love this bit of the union and um and then when you do that they kind of go oh i knew you were a dick yeah thank you for not pretending not to be a dick i don't mind you anymore same in ireland Wales, I don't, don't know. I've never been. I've got no interest in going. Um, Wales. Who's going to Wales? What's the point? Um, it's even, they're even more insecure. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know. I, I would like to go to Wales. Some of it's really, really beautiful, apparently. Um, you know, well done for writing Araf below slow on all the roads. That'll, you know, keep your culture going, won't it? Uh, doesn't look insecure at all. Um... No, I'm sure it's important. I just, uh, I've never understood it. Uh, but that just because you don't understand something doesn't mean that it isn't important. I'm sure I can have somebody explain to me. Uh, there must be a cutoff point with languages, though, like where you go, like, like you, you know, on a night out, like, you, should we call it? Should we call it on this language then? It's just. Uh, but there are lots of native Welsh speakers and, uh, and it's a very satisfying and cool language. Uh, and you know, if you do speak Welsh, you know, let me know. That's, that's great. Well done. Uh, I'd, I'd rather learn French, but if you speak it, that's, that's fantastic. You know, uh, well done. Uh, very, very well done. Also the hard language to learn, isn't it? Because of all the, I mean, it would be, it'd be your native language anyway. I don't want to get. I want, I want to learn a language. I want to learn French. Uh, I think my French identity would be a, a thing I'd like to explore. I think when you learn a new language, you don't just learn the language, you learn who you are in that language. And I would like to see who I was. Non, je um, I I think... I think French, Italian, I think I'd, I don't think I'd be a good guy in Italian. I don't think I'd be nice. I don't think I'd be, I don't think I'd be who you wanted me to be in Italian. Spanish, I, my voice is too deep. I can't do it. Um, that's, I'm joking, obviously. Just always, no, lots of Spanish men that I talk to have high, they have high pitched voices, don't they? Uh, so I, I'm, I couldn't do that. Um, and I'd like to learn something like Mandarin just to bamboozle people. Uh, just to really mess with what was going on. The thing is about doing this solo podcast is that there is, I am completely at the whim of my own energy. So when you see a, a, a buddy podcast and one of them comes in with a low energy because something's happened or they've just had to spend ages setting up their portable podcast setup, you don't get to see like the one being low and the other one being high and the other one geeing the other one up or one responding to the other's energy or working off each other. I just, I either explode forward and, and, and have very little control. I just enter a, a, a flow of dog shit, whatever it is I'm talking about just comes out. Or I, sort of deplete and like fold in on myself like a kind of cake that you've taken out the oven too soon, just wilt in the center and suddenly I'm not there anymore. 
And the thing is, I know, I understand that for a podcast to be successful, what you need is clips and me speaking long form. I think I've only covered three things and I've been going 35 minutes. Speaking long form is it's not very fucking clippable, is it? So what am I going to, what, what is there in this that I can clip and that will be satisfying to people who, you know, you can, you, you know, what's the thick of it line? Let's put a smell in the air and see if anybody gags on it. You know, you put your little whiff out and see if anybody comes sniffing your podcast out. But maybe that's just not what really what it is. So if you like it, then please tell people that you know that you like it. I think I'm going to have to become a bit more thematically engaged. It's still a young podcast, you know. I need to uh, uh, maybe stick to one topic and therefore I can just try and exhaust one idea. Maybe next time I'll do something like, you know, start off with something that everybody will like, like being woke or I've just done that to an extent. Cancel culture, perhaps a whole episode on the history of what cancel culture means. I'll research that tomorrow and do it in York, perhaps. And that'll come out whenever. (laughs) Anyway, you're a good bunch of people. Hey, if you are coming to any of the tour shows, say hello afterwards. Um, our, our bloke who said hello to me, who said he enjoyed the podcast, um, yesterday, uh, where is he? Um, where are you, mate? Where are you? Where are you? Oh dear. There you are. Oh no. Wherever you are. Thank you very, very much for coming up to me and saying that you enjoy the podcast. It really means a lot when people say that because... That's one thing about it being by yourself is that, you know, the whole experience of uh, doing it by yourself uh, means that, um, (laughs) yeah, uh, when somebody says that they like it, it means a lot more because there isn't somebody I can turn to now and go, is that any good? It's a, a, a drastic and heaving feeling of insecurity. Did what I just said make any sense? Was I just talking rubbish? Did I say anything appalling? Even though, like, you know how when you're in your car and the police are behind you, even though you know that you haven't committed a crime, you still go, I broke the law recently. Am I insured? Am I drunk? Like, you just have to check through everything to make sure. And so if a policeman pulls you over, you can't, like, you don't, you become unsure of yourself because you're fearing the worst. Uh, even if you know f- for a fact that you are in that you are insured and that you are sober, I always look back on these podcasts and go, "Did I say anything sort of kind of drastically offensive and insensitive, or was I? Did I come across like an appalling or boring person?" Uh, it's an incredibly exposing thing, and it probably does need to be more thematically driven. But uh, when I get back from tour, there's going to be regular days for broadcast, regular lengths, regular days, and still a young podcast. So it will develop further from here. Make absolutely no mistake about that, listener and viewer. Um, Thank you very much for listening. It's the Alfie Brown Show. Tell all your friends and your family and uh, all of your enemies. Tweet about it, either being horrible about it or being nice about it. I don't care, just as long as it's you're doing it. Um, review, rate and review, share, subscribe on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Alfie Brown Show for another week. Goodbye. <laughs>